What is up guys? Hope you're doing really well. It's Miles here. I'm here in Panama today and I just wanted to film a really quick video for you guys to give you an inside look into how I run my business um, on a daily basis as well on a monthly basis. So it's the 1st of August today and I've just gone and done my monthly plan which then I'll discuss with my manager and we're going to talk things through, work out what our priorities are for the month or well, I've already worked out those priorities and then just discuss anything that he needs to know from me so that he can go away and do it and so that I can focus on my own projects. Honestly, I wasn't gonna make a video about this, but uh, maybe you guys will find it interesting. Basically, it's how a real business works. Um, so I hope you do enjoy this. I'm just gonna run through my monthly priorities, show you, you know, talk about what's actually happening, what's going on, um, why I'm focusing on the things that I am focusing on. And yeah, let's so let's just get straight into it, hey? So basically, I do this every month. Um, I have a w roughly a weekly call with my manager every week, and we run off this document which, are, which I have up here now. And we just talk about the things that we really need to look at and make sure that we're doing each month. Because the thing with Amazon FBA is that everything moves a little bit slowly. Like if you're drop shipping or if you're selling digital products or something, you know, you can advertise, you can scale really, really quickly because you don't have these, these underlying physical products. But with private labeling, you have to go through that whole process of getting inventory, you know, like sourcing it from the supplier, getting it into Amazon, and then taking all that time to sell it. So for example, my first priority is Q4. Now Q4 goes from October to December, but really it's really just the end of November until uh, Christmas. So it's like a one month period, but I have to start looking at this now. And in fact, it's actually getting late to look at Q4 now. And this is the 1st of August. And what I'm looking at is four months away. So having a system like this, especially when your business is getting a bit bigger and you're working with other people, at least in my opinion, is really important because otherwise it's so easy to just sort of go off track or, you know, things happen when they happen, but it's not really what you wanted when you started at the outset or at the start of the year or whenever you set your goals. So I like to do this. I think it works very well actually, and it helps my manager go away and just basically work on things autonomously so that I can spend time making these videos and, you know, doing the fun shit that I wanna do. So looking at Q4 specifically, it's really around inventory management. And so that means making sure that, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but basically Amazon storage fees. Normally throughout the year, they don't cost you that much. For, for what you're getting, it's really, really very cheap. But during these three months, so October, November, and December, uh, they jack the rates up significantly because everybody else is thinking the same thing. Everybody else is trying to get all their goods into Amazon's warehouses. And Amazon doesn't like that because what happens is a lot of the time people will send in too much or not enough. And so like, they just wanna push all of that responsibility back onto those sellers and basically incur a cost. So if you wanna use their storage during this peak period where demand is so high, uh, then you have to pay for it. So the storage rates actually go up significantly. And so if like me, you're sending in lots and lots of items, then it's a significant cost. Last year, um, it would have been more than $10,000 all up across Q4. And this year, it'll be more than that. So what I wanna do where possible is save on that fee. Now as well, there are all these other issues. I do sea shipping, so I'm shipping from China via sea to the United States. And then normally my shipments will go straight to FBA. However, during Q4, there are always a lot of customs delays. So that's coming from China into the US, those so through customs, and this will affect your air shipments as well. There's a much higher chance of things getting delayed and just taking much longer during that period. And obviously, I need my stuff to be in there for November and December. So what I'm looking at doing is sending stuff a little bit earlier, having it stored in the US, but not in Amazon because I don't wanna pay those fees. And then from the US storage, sending them as I need them uh, into Amazon. The issue there is that you can never predict exactly how long it will take to send stuff from within the US, from a warehouse within the US into Amazon FBA and how long it will take Amazon to process it and make it available for sale. So there's all of these moving parts here, but basically what that means is when I push stuff all the way back, I need to have my last orders for this year really placed very, very soon. So that's a priority for this week. So this project is really all about making sure that all of those goods are in production at the right time so that they can go through that whole process and basically make me a lot of money in December. The next one is Europe, FBA in Europe, especially the UK, um, but also Germany as well is a big market. And then the other ones, you know, France, Italy, and Spain, uh, they're smaller, but they're still there. So a lot of people act have actually asked me recently, like, should I be looking at the US or the UK to start in? Uh, it's a long story and I'll probably do another video in this or even a series of videos, because there's a lot to it but I think it's really a matter of like pluses and minuses. So basically the UK and Europe is a lot less competitive. So that means that stuff will stay more stable. Like in the US, uh, some people have problems with finding a good product 
And then as they're sourcing it or as they're launching it, a lot of other people start to jump on it. And so that competitiveness or the competitive landscape can change relatively quickly. In Europe, you won't find that. Um, and that's because there are less people looking at the market, which is great. You also find that, for example, reviews are less of an issue. I've, I don't do any launching stuff at all in Europe. I just like set my item at full price with no reviews uh, and then just let it go and run PPC. PPC is also cheaper. So you can see that basically like everything is just less competitive. There are less people trying to sell those products on Amazon in Europe. The flip side, the reason why probably that there are less people doing this is that it's more work. So if you wanna sell into anywhere in Europe, but normally it's the UK because it makes sense, we, they speak English, uh, it's just easier to do that. And it's also, I think the biggest market, Germany and UK are, are quite similar. The reason why that's difficult is because of, uh, mainly it's because of VAT. So for now, just understand that if you are looking at any products to sell in the UK, or you're thinking about the costs or the time and the effort involved in selling on the UK, just understand that you need to know VAT. You need to collect VAT on all of your sales, which is going to be around 20%. That can vary, but you could just sort of estimate at 20%. And then you're gonna to need to take that off the sale price as well. So if you're looking at all of these profit margins, make sure you've included 20% VAT in that sale price. The next thing is that you have to register for VAT and then you have to file a quarterly VAT returns. So that is just, it's like a few thousand dollars every year and it's a bit of a hassle and it's just another thing that you have to learn and understand. So the UK is one thing, but one of the big benefits of expanding into Europe is that you can then sell all across Europe. So from the UK, if you send your goods into the UK, you list in the UK, all you have to do to be able to sell in Germany and in France, in Spain and in Italy, all those other marketplaces, you have to translate the listings and you have to turn on this thing called the European Fulfillment Network. And what that means is that although your goods are stored in the UK, Amazon, as long as you have listings in all of those other marketplaces, which obviously they have to be in the native language, so you have to get it translated, but Amazon will send the goods from the UK whenever anybody on those other websites is searching for them and they buy them on the other website, Amazon will just send your goods from the UK to that customer. So there's a fee involved with doing that, but it basically means that like, logistically, it's really easy to sell to all of these new marketplaces. I identified that as something that I wanted to do it quite a while ago now, about a year ago, and it's finally starting to pay off. So we're up to 16K in the last 30 days now, woohoo. And that's that's profitable. Like again, I said, I haven't done anything to launch any of these products. Um, I'll, I'll put a screenshot up somewhere. Uh, as well, advertising is quite cheap, so PPC costs are a lot lower. I'll put up some more screenshots somewhere. And it, it just kind of like, it flows quite easily. So to summarize, this is really just like ticking that over, getting some new products happening there in Europe um, and just making sure that I have stock available. And the next one that I wanna deal with this month is my brand project. And really what I mean by that is actually like building things off Amazon, building methods as well of driving traffic off Amazon. I've said quite a few times on this channel that up until very recently, I've only ever used Amazon PPC for ranking. Uh, a few giveaways, but a long time ago. Realistically is by like normal method. It's mainly just been PPC, low price, good product, get it out there and it's always, almost always work. Um, so I am gonna move away from that, or at least diversify rather, because I'm seeing more and more the value in having an asset, like either a customer list, or an email list, or a messenger bot list, basically something that you can access your customers off of Amazon, identify with them more specifically, and therefore control that communication, use that as a way to drive traffic onto Amazon or you know somewhere else if you want to. But for me, my goal is mainly to keep it on Amazon and just because Amazon is such a fantastic source of traffic, and then you can have that interaction where you can actually drive up your rankings using this off Amazon source, and therefore maximize your on Amazon sales. So that's how I see that working. The way that I'm gonna do that is through using Facebook ads for ranking. Um, I posted a video, I'll put the link up here, where I had some issues with my Facebook ads account, and that's been solved, so this will be getting done very quickly, and then I'll make some more videos about that too. Um, I also wanna start using all of the items that I'm already selling. So this is like an advantage because I am already I already have a 100K a month business. I can just put inserts and things in my packaging to be able to you know, reach out directly to those existing customers. I do recommend that if you're starting out, then you just start this anyway um, because it builds up over time. So I'll just be putting simple inserts into all of my packaging. Um, firstly, trying to get them to like post photos of the product on Instagram and trying to build up my Instagram account, or if nothing else, just have social proof showing people, you know, like happily using the product and also getting them to sign up for a warranty. So with the warranty, they'll put in their email address and then I can contact them later on. Some other things as part of this project that I'm working on, by the way, sorry that I'm sort of like looking between the camera and the computer, I'm just reading off my notes. Uh, I also wanna build out my brand websites, get that 
like again the off Amazon sort of authenticity going. Uh, I have just recently had my first trademark approved after <laughs> nearly a year, I think about nine months roughly for that entire process to go through. So now I can start the brand registry process. I actually don't know how long that takes, um, but again, I will be making videos about that and keeping you guys updated. I've never really considered it to be a huge priority in terms of like what it gives you on Amazon, but it's just nice to have again for legitimacy. It does, it does give you benefits, enhanced brand content. Um, it can help with hijacked listings, but it doesn't completely prevent it. And there are other benefits, but it's not like a game changer, I don't think. Next one then is product development. Basically, this is the, my last opportunity to launch any new products for Christmas. So I'll be launching the ones that I've been developing in the most recent month. So I have a whole bunch actually coming into Amazon now. Uh, I did talk about that in that previous video. I'll put it up there again. But basically, I haven't been launching much for the last few months in this year because I've been dealing with like team management, building a team and just and, and starting this YouTube channel and other projects. So those are all sort of coming now a bit delayed. So I'm gonna really focus on getting them moving as fast as possible. And then I'm actually gonna to have to take some uh, probably more risky decisions about how much those products should be ordered or you know which products I want to order again because not all products succeed. Also because they're also quite giftable as well, I'm not gonna have a lot of data as to like how many to order for Q4. So that decision is gonna be coming up very soon as to like which of these new products are worthwhile ordering a lot more for Q4 um, even though I've only been selling them for like a week or less, you know. Um, and then the next, the last thing is just making sure that I do have some new products coming in through this pipeline. So I'll be experimenting more with bundles over the next couple of uh, next couple of new products that I'm launching. So a bundle basically is where you're taking, you know, like a product that exists on Amazon and then another product that exists on Amazon. And generally, you'll see I'll put up a screenshot somewhere that a lot of the time you can identify which products make good bundles because they will be either frequently bought together or in the customer's also bought section. And so that just means that somebody who's shopping for item A is most likely to also be shopping for item B. And so the idea of having a bundle is that you just put them together and there's gonna be less sellers, less competition. So there may be like 10 sellers selling A, 10 sellers selling B, but zero sellers selling both of them together. So if you can be the guy selling both, then suddenly you have your own little market space. And it's just, it's a bit more complicated getting bundles together and whenever there's more work, that's like a barrier to entry. So I like things that take a bit of work because you just wanna weed out, again, as much of that like easy competition as possible. Um, also with the way the fee structures work a lot of the time, like your profit margins get better with bundling uh, and things like that. So it's a really good way of doing things is like creating unique products out of existing products. So I'll be doing that for the next, probably at least the next two products that I launch. Um, and that's pretty much my launch process or launch focus for the rest of this year. So those are really the main projects that I'm looking at this month. I've got to deal with Q4, Amazon Europe, Facebook ads, ranking, and then also that product development and product launch pipeline, new products basically. I also have some other minor projects that I'm working on. Now, the first one is really only relevant if you have a team, but this is just something that I, I get a lot of value out of this, um, which is like helping other people. So whether that's in my own business or whether it's you guys, or anyone else, like I, it's something that I'm really passionate about. So basically like my manager works for me, but I also really want him to be able to just go and do this for himself. Like exactly this, like take the entire blueprint and duplicate it whenever he wants to in the future. So I'm, you know, like gonna be completely open and teach him everything that I know. And so we, when we talk about all of this work stuff, we also talk about like entrepreneurship, um, personal development, mentorship, all of that sort of stuff comes hand in hand. And I always find that super interesting to, to discuss with him. And if you guys want to talk about anything, just hit me up. I'm always happy to talk about it. Basically, it's like personal productivity, how to be the best version of yourself, how to manage, how to do things well. But yeah, guys, so this is a very different type of video. I just wanted to give you this behind the scenes look into what I'm doing, um, the reasons why I'm doing these things as well, and how I sort of set this up and structure it so that I can get, you know, basically achieve the goals that I've set for myself. Um, uh, besides this, I'm also working on this channel, obviously producing free content for you guys. I've also recently opened up finally the waitlist for the uh, Nomad Accelerator program. So the link is down below if you're interested in something more than what I'm putting out for free. If you wanna learn from me and get some ment mentorship and basically access to everything that I've learned over the last couple of years, do click that link down below. If you're serious about actually doing something real to like improve your life, um, I don't really want tire kickers. So if that's you, like, don't worry about it. Just you know, keep watching the videos for free. 
Um, if you do want to take action and really make a change, then do click that link down below. So what I'd love to know from you was, was this helpful to you? Did you find this interesting? Is there anything you want to know more specifically about? I read every single comment. So if you've watched this far and you know there's something that you are curious to know more about, leave me a comment down below. Uh, I will at the very least see it and I probably will respond to it as well. And if enough people want you know, like certain types of content or want to know about certain topics, then I'll make more videos for you guys. So that's it guys. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful day. The next video is coming right up. Don't go anywhere. See you there.